Strong energy and a Lele. Nothing really too bad for him one, either. One, like in rock wine. All right. And they are off the. So, oh, oh, maybe not. Maybe a little, a little too soon. Here we go. All right. False start. Now we're beginning. Looks like Pablo will be going first in our first semifinal match. All right. Starting off strong with that Buzzwall GX Pokemon. And of course, the Brooklet Hill coming down turn one. We've seen this numerous times from this deck and Pablo especially. It gets all of his attackers and it gets his support Pokemon in Remoraid. Yeah, uh, it's just a great card to have. Just gets so many Pokemon, allows for a free deck search for Pablo. Uh, great card to have here on turn one. Does help out uh, Pram a little bit as well as he can get a Rock Rough, but he already has two on the board. It's not really mattering too much. The, the advantage that it gives Pablo is too powerful to pass up. Yeah, exactly. And he is eyeing that Remoraid. Octillery is an important card, especially when you're such a fast deck. Yeah, he just needs to uh, get this Octillery out, start drawing cards. It's really what saves you uh, in the, in the mid-game. And we've seen a lot of games be decided by Abyssal Hand. Either, you know, oh, I got end low and they knocked out my Octillery, or I, I prized it, or just, yeah, I got into one or two and it just didn't matter. I just went off with Octillery and drew as many cards as I wanted. Exactly. And he attaches the energy to the Buzzwall and passes the turn. And his hand looks pretty good. He did not play a supporter, but it looks like he has a Sycamore in hand along with a Guzma. So now for Michael Pramwatt, he does choose to use Brooklet Hill. Of course, he can get a Rock Rough if he chooses to, but it's really just to see what's in his deck for free. Yeah, uh, it, like we said, does provide an advantage to Pram as well. Getting that third Rock Rough, just might as well get it out onto the bench, thin your deck a little bit. Get to take a look at what's what's prized. And I also kind of want to mention with the player profile with Pram, he put the rock rough that he used to take down Yoshi Tate's <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, deck out deck. And I, I thought that's, that's pretty funny. All right, here's the field blower taking down the Brooklyn Hill. He already got his use out of it. Doesn't want Pablo to keep using it every turn. And we're going to see rock rough deal some damage. This card has been on the left side of the screen quite a few times now, and Tackle for 40 damage thanks to Choice Band on the Buzzwool GX. Yeah, Rock Ruff has put in a lot of work, has taken a lot of prizes for Pramawat um, in, throughout this tournament, probably more than any Rock Ruff has taken uh, since the printing of the card. Yeah, and with all of Pram's turn, unfortunately, his hand's not very good. He didn't really play a supporter, and although he does have a Zork in hand, uh, the Zora on the field is very susceptible to being knocked out with just a Guzma. Yeah, Guzma, Bloodthirsty Eyes can lead to a lot of bad plays, and I think Pram is just hoping that that's not what happens here. And, oh, he chooses not to do it. All right, he kind of wants to just sick more. He, he's fine with this setup. So Pram Watt's going to be pretty happy that he gets to... Zorak is kind of his only hope here for staying in the game. Uh, he needs to uh, evolve his Zorark and then trade, and then hopefully through drawing so many extra cards, he can uh, have a somewhat reasonable hand. Yeah, and Pablo does draw the Octillery off of the Sycamore for seven. So now he'll be able to kind of go through his deck a little bit more, get a few more Pokemon charged up. Yeah, there's uh, the... Artillery we just talked about, very, very important. It's great to have it uh, here on the second turn. Just allows for the most cards to be drawn with Abyssal Hand. Uh, allows him to go through his deck so quickly. Uh, even with the Flow Stone on it, too, very nice. Sometimes you can see uh, situations where it gets kind of trapped in the active after Guzma or something, but that won't be happening this game. All right, Float Stone coming down on the Artillery. A great card for your support Pokemon so they don't get trapped active. And... I think you might be reading Max Elixir, but unfortunately for Pablo, Max Elixir only attaches to basic Pokemon, so he doesn't really have a target for that on the bench unless he chooses to play the Tapu Lele down. Yeah, I think what he was asking is if he could just play it, but I don't, I don't think that's, I don't think he can. He needs to have a legal target for it. All right, strong energy coming down on the bench, Lycanroc GX, and yet the fighting energy was attached thanks to a Max Elixir when it was just a Rock Rough. 
and Abyssal Hand gets another strong energy. Yep, and we see a Jet Punch for 30 to the Zora and 30 to the Rock Ruff, and there's that Zora GX. All right, let's see what he could do. He drew a Puzzle of Time, discards it for trade. He needs something here, and there's an N. Wow. Yep, he has two Lycanroc GX as well, so he can uh, use Bloodthirsty Eyes if he'd like to target down a different Pokemon. And I think he has do. a double colorless in his hand as well. We could see a Claw Slash here to take the knockout on the Octillery yeah, and we, kind of take away Pablo's support. And we mentioned how uh, Octillery wasn't going to get trapped in the active position this game, which it's not, but it is going to uh, get brought up and just knocked out, which uh, Pablo unfortunately only got one card off of it in this game. Uh, Pram correctly identifying that he really needed to can try to hinder the support and take the knockout on the artillery while he can. Well, if you remember earlier stream match where Pramwat played against a Passimian deck where he just kept going for the Remoraids, in the interview he was like, why do you hate Remoraids so much? I, I, <laughs> I think he's still holding a little grudge. And then Enhanced Hammer comes down, getting rid of that strong energy on the Lycanroc, just trying to hinder Pablo's setup as much as possible is Pramwat, and there's a knockout. And wow. Pram going from almost nothing on turn one, being forced to attack with Rockruff against a Buzzwool, now has a fully charged up Lycanroc GX and a Zorark and a fully functional hand. Yep, and that's the power of Zorark GX. Just that trade drew him in to the end and just kind of everything went from there. All right, energy on the Lycanroc in the active spot, and a Sycamore gets a brand new hand of seven for Pablo. Yeah, this uh, Lycanroc is going to be able to take a knockout with Dangerous Rogue GX. That's what Pablo decides he wants to do, thanks to the Choice Band. And there's another Max Elixir. Does he hit the fighting? He does, all right. Charging up another Buzzwall on the bench. We talked a little bit about this in past uh, matches that Pablo's been featured in, that kind of being able to attach multiple energy a turn via Max Elixir, or just generally having multiple energy on the board is really strong for him. And you can see that com that uh, being really important here, too, is he has two on the active and then two, or one on each of the benched. So uh, he is fully set up here and as far as energy goes, although he does miss that last yeah, one. Yeah, unfortunately for him, he cannot go three for three to start off this game. And... He still has four energy in play. That's pretty good for, what, turn three? Yeah, I mean, again, he just, that's just really... We've seen it be really important to just have multiple energy out so you're not constantly uh, relying on attaching any, uh, to be able to do anything. And this is where we see kind of the detriment of Octillery getting knocked out. His hand isn't really doing much for him. So there we see the dangerous Rogue GX taking the knockout thanks to Choice Band. And we'll see what... Pram can cobble together. Yeah, that is two prizes for Pablo, just realizing I should deal with this like an rock. I'll use my GX attack, take two prizes, get the knockout here. Leaving Pram with uh, his only attacker is a fighting weak Zorark GX. Yeah, being threatened by just a single energy card from Pablo to take a one hit with Claw Slash. But Pram does play down the Tapu Lele GX and uses Wonder Tag. And he's really hoping for a supporter that kind of dig him out of this. Yeah, uh, I think with ha without having any setup here, I assume the play is going to be N, although... Uh, he, he actually takes he a Bridget. Yeah, that, actually, that actually makes sense. He wants to try to actually have something after these Zoroarks here. This is the play where it kind of just lets thin out the deck a little bit more. Yes. So there we see an Ultra Ball getting another Zorua. And even though Zorark is fighting weak, we've seen how powerful it is even against these fighting Pokemon. Just actually has the end there. She just kind of has it all uh, able to get the Zorua onto the bench and then end Pablo down to four. Again, without any support Pokemon, he has no artillery to, to draw him out. So he does have energy on the board. His, his board setup is fine. He is drawing four cards, so it's not like it's, you know, getting end to one or two, but... Uh, he may be feeling the pain of that Octillery getting knocked out early. It'll be interesting to see if he has access to an energy in his hand. I didn't see an energy now, but there is another N. Pram dropping another Zora, filling his bench. 
kind of re-setting uh, up his attackers here. And he's debating attaching the choice band. Trade? Or there, the yeah, trade. He, he was debating uh, attacking the choice band, decides to trade with the Tapu Lele. I think now he has two Zoroks in hand, so as long as those Zoros on the bench survive, he'll be able to put out plenty of more Zoroks. Yeah, there's a Riot is beating for 120, and action is back on Pablo. All right, all Pablo needs is an energy to take the knockout. And remember, he plays that one of multi-switch. Could be a card he might be looking for right now. Taking a knockout on the Zorak would be big, putting Pablo down to only two prizes remaining. Uh, he also, I know he has a Guzma in his hand as well. He could potentially see a play where he targets down one of the Zorwa. Yeah, it looks like that's what's happening now. Yeah, you can always knock out this Zorark later, and without having the energy in your hand, why play more resources than you need to, right? Yeah, may as well uh, just kind of take take this knockout here, prevent Pram from getting too many Zorark set up. Again, they, they are great in multiples with trade, and you can even put some extra pressure on the bench Pokemon with uh, Jet Punch. And there we see an Ultra Ball most likely Wow, looking for the Tapu Lele, but it is prized, I believe. I'm going to go ahead and take a Remoraid. He does play a 2-2 two, two line, so um, needs to set up that Octillery. Again, we saw it get knocked out early. Really hindered his um, ability to draw a card, so he's hoping to get a second one out and hope that won't be as big of a problem. And that will leave Pablo with an empty hand if he chooses to bench it. And he's really going to struggle here. Yeah, nothing else going on. He's going to go ahead and take the knockout on the Zora. Yeah, he doesn't even choose to bench it. Uh, op opening himself up to potentially also um, top decking an Ultra Ball or something that he has two cards. There's the Zora, or Zorark, rather. And there's a trade. One of two, discarding the Zorark. You don't need any more. The Zorark got knocked out. Yeah, that uh, Zorark was going to hit the field, but uh, unfortunately, that Zorark was not long for this world. And we see the Professor Kukui in Pram's hand. Trade. There's the trade again, discarding the Tapu Lele. What did he draw? Seems to be an N. Yeah, don't suspect he'll be uh, playing an N into... Pablo's uh, Remoraid and one unknown card. Just going to take his third opportunity to draw two cards with the Professor Kukui. And wow, there's a Field Blower, a big card right now, getting both of the Choice Fans on Pablo's Buzzwold and the Lycanroc off the field. And there we see the Bloodthirsty Eyes bringing up the Lycanroc. He will take a knockout, and that's going to knock two energy off of Pablo's board. Yeah, uh, getting rid of the Choice Band, hitting that... Bloodthirsty Eyes to get rid of this uh, threatening attacker here, going down to three prizes himself. Even has a double puzzle of time. And you actually see him grab another puzzle. That's because he discarded it early on. So it'll actually make the last puzzle useful left, left in his deck. Yep, even gets an attachment on the Lycanroc as well, just to set up for a potential dangerous rogue in the future. Right is beating. And, and that's a knockout. Yeah, right is beating for 100 damage, taking the knockout on Lycanroc GX, Pram is now at three prizes to Pablo's three prizes. And Pablo promoting the fresh, like, uh, Buzzwall GX, and I don't quite see what the last card in his hand is, but... I believe it's a Guzma, a Remoraid, and a Fighting Energy. Nothing too useful here, just deciding if he wants to play the Guzma, and then going to decide what he wants to Jet Punch when that time comes. Yeah, unfortunately, he will not be able to knock out a Zoroark, as even though Buzzwall is a fighting Pokemon, only dealing 30 with Jet Punch does not mean he could do the full 170 left on that Zoroark. Yeah, just going to go ahead and hit both of the Zoroark GXs, soften them up to be able to more easily knock them out later in the game. But Pablo is not in a great position here. He says that lone Remoraid in hand, again, uh, just needs the top of his deck to be kind to him if he wants to stay in this game. 
There we see a trade discarding an N, a card Pablo would have loved to see right now. Yeah, Pram making it very clear. I'm not playing this. I'm just uh, getting rid of it for trade. And there we see a Mallow with that trade. Look at the difference in hand sizes, too. That's insane. This is what Zorark does best. There's a Bloodthirsty Eyes bringing up the Buzzwall without an energy. Pram's kind of noticing, yeah, you don't really have much going on right now. There's a retreat. And there is, we're going to see a Riotous beating here pretty soon. All right, 100 and damage coming down on top the Buzz Wall. Ultra Ball. And Ultra Ball doesn't really get you anything. There's no Tapu Lele left. Nope. It's in the discard. Uh, so you really could get an Octillery, but you don't even have the Remory down. You need it to discard. Yeah, just nothing there. Pablo is just forced to pass the turn back to Prem as he just has an embarrassment of riches here, trading something like a 10-card hand. Going to take a knockout here, get down to a single prize. This is why Zorak is such a popular card and why it's so good in this game. The ability to have such a huge card advantage over your opponent, especially after taking out their draw power. Yeah, this Pablo is just so far behind now. I'm not sure if he can actually crawl back in. Uh, to this game. It's going to be very difficult to orchestrate, if so. Third energy coming down on the Lycanroc GX on Pram's side of the field. It is now threatening a big Claw Slash. Pram just goes, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and attach this Choice Band, boost my damage up a little bit, um, putting him, putting him uh, himself able to knock out a Buzzwall with a Kakui. And there we go, right? It's beating knockout on the buzz wall. And Pramp is now left with one prize to Pablo's three. And Pablo has one draw to try to make a comeback. There's the knuckle impact taking the knockout, but it's really just a matter of time. Guzma, yep, bring Guzma. up the buzz wall. There it is. Michael Pramawa takes game one in a dominating fashion, really, over Pablo Meza. Pablo started off fine. Uh, we were really excited about him getting the Octillery early, but uh, after he'd only drawn one card with Octillery on his second turn, uh, Pramawat was able to Bloodthirsty Eyes, knock it out, and then Pablo's draws were just horrendous um, from, from then on. He just passed multiple turns with basically nothing in his hand, a Remoraid, which represented nothing, uh, while, while Pramawat was trading, trading, and just kind of advancing the board state, taking more prizes, just going off in every way. Yeah, it was definitely... Pram being able to draw out of his dead hand with the Zorark GX, the lone Zora surviving that turn two attack and drawing into a field bowler to take off the Brooklet Hill and being able to bloodthirsty eyes the artillery to knock it out. It, it was a perfect turn. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did, again, Pablo has uh, defeated this same deck in the Ben Potter in the top eight. So I imagine that he has a strategy that has been working for him so far, but just not a whole lot you can do when uh, you're just drawing as poorly as he was. Still, there's a reason we play best two of three. He still has a chance to win this and advance to the finals. Just needs to win these next two games. As for Pramawat, all he needs to do is win one more to be in the finals and one step closer to his seventh regional championship victory. God, that, that's insane. It sure is. All right, players getting set up. Didn't quite see what the starters were, but there are no mulligans, so looks like Pablo may be thinking about benching an additional Pokemon, but just decides to start laying out his prizes. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. All right, we got a Remoraid, a Regirock, a rock rough, nothing too bad. The Remoraid might come and play a little bit if Pram chooses to target those down again. And we see the two basic fighting in Pram's deck are in the prizes right now. <coughs> so we'll see if that comes into play as well. Pablo starts it off and he has the Pseudo Wudo. It's a card that's actually pretty good in this matchup, but it's a little bit harder to charge up than just a regular Buzzwall. Yeah, it does require two attachments. It is a basic, of course. You can max elixir onto it, but starting in the active position is not where you want it to be. Uh, so Dewoto has been a pretty cool Pokemon uh, since it's, it's this weekend. It's been pretty interesting to see. I think we saw a big uh, 
Sudowoodo play versus a Gardevoir earlier. That was pretty pretty fun. Watch and Learn can be a pretty interesting attack. Watch and Learn also has like a little bit of a, a game to it where it's not actually just copying an attack. There there have been a lot of attacks that just can straight up copy. Zorark actually is kind of known for that. Um, but this one actually makes you only copy an attack if your opponent used it last turn. So you can kind of blank the Sudowoodo by just not attacking if your opponent doesn't surprise you with it. Yeah, exactly. And looking at Pablo's hand, he did just play an Ultra Ball, eyeing down a Remoraid, but he also has a Brooklet Hill in his hand. And of course, we talk about Bridget's really popular as a turn one play. For this Buzzwall Lycanroc deck, Brooklet Hill is probably the card you want the most. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's just such a great card. All these evolution decks are just relying on getting their basic Pokemon out early. That's all you really want to do on the first turn, and Brooklet Hill just lets you do that basically for free. And there is the Buzzwall GX, the swollen Pokemon, and he will look to get that charged up, and along with the Sycamore in his hand, draw a brand new hand of seven. Yeah, finding the Remoraid there was great. He has the Buzz, he has a Buzzwall as well. Just going to be able to fire off the Sycamore here, and things are mostly going right for Pablo. It's starting to the Widow is not exactly where you want to be, but it's not the worst fate in the world either. And again, this is kind of the same start he had before, and this deck usually does this turn one. It's pretty easy to get a Buzzwall with an energy, get a Remory down with Brooklet Hill, do all that stuff. But the seven cards he drew from that Sycamore aren't very good. Yeah, I don't actually see a supporter. I see a, couple, a pair of choice spans, maybe even three choice spans. Energy and three I choice spans, a, a couple rock. fighting yes. and a lightning rock. Lightning rock, yeah. So uh, the top of his deck again will need to be kind to him here. Uh, probably could see Pablo with a pretty unplayable hand once again. But. And that will all depend on what Pram can do here, as uh, this Buzzwool is actually pretty threatening to these to this Zora. Yeah, and of course, Pram starting out his first turn the way everyone should when your opponent plays Brooklet Hill, searching your deck for free. And he actually gets the Rock Ruff, plays the Tapu Lele from his hand, and it looks like he's choosing Sycamore this time. Yeah, gets, gets a Sycamore. Oftentimes, you'll see a Bridget play uh, with that, but... Multiple reasons why you could take a Sycamore. Uh, you can't really leave yourself with uh, no draw cards after playing the Bridget. It's the most common reason. Um, Ultra Ball plays also can play into that. There's the Floatstone trying to save the Zorua from this threatening Buzzwool GX and the Sycamore. Discarding a few supporters from Pram's hand, but yeah. getting a fresh new hand of seven. Yeah, dropping the Zorua and then just drawing seven cards is uh, so strong there. He's just... It's Almost like he Bridgeted, but he also got to draw seven. And here's the energy lotto from Pram. Dex usually, uh, the Zorak Lycanroc deck usually chooses between energy lotto or multi switch. And it's interesting to see he chose energy lotto. There's the double colorless. Nice. All right. So he gets kind of that free double colorless attachment here. Yeah, he'll be able to use it on the Tapu Lele if he chooses so and put a little pressure on this Buzzwool. Yeah, too risky to put it on either of the Zoras, in my opinion. Uh, they can both either be easily knocked out, and the Tapu Lele actually provides some immediate pressure. All right, and here we will see an energy drive 460 turn action back to Pablo, and he draws a bus wolf. Nothing else really to advance his board state further. He can have another energy attachment, but that's basically it. Yeah, nothing too exciting here on Pablo's side. Again, the victim of some unfortunate draws. Although uh, Rock Ruff, you know, he does have the Lycan Rock in hand, so being able to Bloodthirsty as next turn can gain him some advantage depending on what Pram does. So not all hope is lost, certainly. Still a lot of game to be played, but not exactly uh, the opening hand, or the hand that Pablo wanted to see. And there we go. The Jet Punch from Buzzwell with a Choice Band, dealing 60 to the Tapu Lele and 30 to the Rock Ruff on the bench. Action is now back to Michael Pramwat and to see if he can actually get some Zoroks in play. That's going to be his first priority here. He has a Lycan Rock as well in his hand. There's a Rescue Stretcher skidding back that Zorok that he discarded uh, off the Sycamore last turn. He, he planned this all out. 
Oh yeah, of course. Fan. Yeah. All right, there is a lichen rock, and the bloodthirsty eyes bringing up the pseudo wudo. There's a professor sycamore. Uh, Prem just realizing he doesn't want to uh, get punished here by the pseudo wudo watching, learning. So he's just going to go ahead and bring it to the active position. Tries to evolve the Zora into a strong energy, but unfortunately <laughs> that is not the evolution of Zora. Not a legal play, unfortunately, for Pramwalat. And here we will see the first trade of the game before Pram. Puzzle and a choice band. A lot of options here. Zorak decks always prevent, present uh, you with so many cards in your hand when you do things like Puzzle of Time and you have to decide which uh, card you want to discard off of tr to select the another trade. It just can become uh, a really confusing process. Very difficult to play absolutely correctly. Yeah, and unfortunately, there was no double colorless for Pram in those trades. So he attaches a strong energy to the Lycanroc on the bench and deals 60 with energy drive. And turn is back to Pablo. Did he draw something he can use? No, a max elixir, but still supporterless as of right now. It does hit off the max elixir, chooses to attach to the rock rough. Again, does have that lichen rock in hand. Gonna go ahead and activate Brooklet Hill. And he chooses not to get anything. Really nothing of note he really needs right now. I think he already has another Buzzwall in his hand. I would expect that we're going to see a Bloodthirsty Eyes go after the Lycan Rock, and then a Dangerous Rogue GX knockout here, drawing Pablo two of his prizes. All right, and these two prize cards need to be good. He really needs is. a supporter or a way to get Octillery. Big GX attack. Uh, is it an Ultra Ball I see in his hand? I actually missed I, what he I dropped. I think that's was. what it was, yeah. Which would be great. Now, action is back to Pramawat. Has been, but despite uh, Pablo's pretty shaky hands in the early turns of this game, has been presented with a Lycan Rock, which is a very real threat for the fighting weak Zorarks. Yeah, especially with the two energy on it. One more energy, and he threatens Claw Slash. A very easy way to knock out these Zoroks in one hit. Choice Band does come down on the Tapu Lele, though, meaning it will hit for 110 damage if he chooses to Energy Drive, just as it is. Trade. Getting rid of a second copy of Choice Band with Trade. There is a second Puzzle of Time he drew with Trade. Depending on what's in his discard, he could do some cute tricks. Again, all things you need to consider. It also looks like... I was going to go ahead and play a Mallow. Really interesting synergy between Mallow and Zorark. So uh, Mallow is just going to take any two cards that Pram wants, put them on top of the deck, and then a trade will just draw them immediately. So uh, pretty strong there. Mallow, not something you really commonly see outside of Zorark decks. Some of the Octillery decks will kind of do a similar gimmick, but it's just uh, guaranteed with the Zorark. Yeah, exactly. And it looks like he's eyeing down a Field Blower and a Double Colorless here. Field blower could be big, getting rid of the choice bands on Pablo's side of the field. Yep, so the deck gets shuffled, and then those two cards go on top, and then he's going to go ahead and ultra ball, or sorry, uh, trade the ultra ball away to get them right back into his hand. And then, of course, can't forget about Brooklet Hill getting a free Pokemon for Pramawat. Yeah, putting that second copy of Rothgrok into play, threatening bloodthirsty eyes, even if something would have happened to one of these rock roughs. All right, field blur coming down, and it is getting rid of both choice bands on Pablo's side of the field, kind of limiting his one-hit potential with a lot of his cards. Strong energy coming down on the rock rough, and retreat to the Tapu Lele. We will see an energy drive for 110 damage. Yeah, unfortunately uh, for Premwat, if... Pablo has an energy, he can immediately respond here with a Claw Slash for the knockout. Yeah, and I think Pablo's hand is now finally starting to come together. There is the energy for the knockout he needs. He also has a Max Elixir that he just drew, and the Ultra Ball from the prizes. Yeah, Depending he, if he could play everything, 
he'll be able to get Octillery and then Abyssal Hand for a fresh five new cards as well. Yeah, he's just uh, totally fine here. Uh, he had some had a rough start, but has been able to recover and is actually uh, in complete control of this game. The thing you have to be careful about is discarding some of the cards in his hand, like Buzzswall or even the Choice Band. Those cards are pretty handy uh, later on in this game. Yeah, chooses to find a Regirock with that Brooklet Hill. Regirock going to boost all fighting Pokemon damage by 10. Uh, mostly relevant in the early game versus uh, some of the smaller basics. You can do tricky things with a Jet Punch with a Fighting Energy, or sorry, a Strong Energy and a Regirock out, things like that. And yeah, he chooses to Ultra Ball away the Choice Band and the Buzzwall in his hand, getting that Octillery, the much needed draw power that he was missing all last game. Yeah, finally gets it out, is going to be able to draw, I believe, all five uh, cards if he uh, attaches and plays a Max Elixir here. All right, there is the attachment. Claw Slash will be an inevitability. Max Elixir. Does he hit the basic energy he needs? Looks like he has no. missed, so no free energy attachment there. But he is going to be able to Abyssal Hand for five fresh cards. All right, and this is why Octillery is so important in this deck. Being able to draw without using a supporter for your turn. And... Wow, there's two strong energies to start out, and then a Sycamore and a Guzma. So he will be completely set next turn. Yeah, even uh, another Buzzwool, uh, kind of a fresh one after the one on the bench has that 60 damage on it. So yeah, just a completely fine hand. There's a knockout. Pablo going down to just two prizes remaining. Those Zoraks are pretty easy prizes for this deck. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Pram that he really can't attack with a Zorak this turn because then Sudowo just comes up with an energy and right is speeding to take the knockout. Yeah, you see he, uh, while like Rock GX does not use Bloodthirsty Eyes, realizes that he needs to deal with the current active like Rock GX uh, on Pablo's side or he just can't win the game. So just going to take a knockout this way this turn. And there we see the double puzzle of time, getting back puzzle and a field blower. Field below are taking care of the Floatstone and the Brooklet Hill. Kind of just cleaning up the rest of the board. Doesn't want any shenanigans happening with the Floatstone. And playing an N. Uh, Popo's only getting two cards, but of course he does have that Octillery in play. So the N uh, is not super relevant, but it will draw Pram a fresh hand of six cards. Yeah, and Pram is still looking to take his first prizes of this game. Let's see what he can cobble together. Trade. Let me go ahead and trade a Bridget away. Probably the most common trade target. Uh, just getting rid of extra copies as they become basically useless the trade. longer the game goes. Second trade, discarding a Zorark GX. Drawing nothing much of help. A Rockruff and a Tapu Lele. He still does have the option to retreat and Claw Slash for the knockout. And action will be put back on Pablo to see if he can take a knockout on a Zorark. Yep, so there is the retreat to the Lycanroc. And there is the Claw Slash for the knockout. Kramawad's first two prizes of the game. Sudo Wudo gets sent active. On Pablo's side. Now Pablo is very close to winning this game. Just needs to take another two prize knockout. Let's see what he can put together. And last card on the Max Elixir gets the fighting energy. This is what Pablo wanted to see. The more energy, the better. Just needs one more energy on that buzzwall to be able to uh, use the... Yeah, so unfortunately... Knuckle impact attack, sorry, I forgot what it was called for momentarily. So unfortunately for Pablo, he does not have, like, a Guzma or anything like that, but with a pistol hand, he did draw three cards. 
but no, it does not look like he drew what he needed this turn. Rescue Stretcher bringing up a rock rough from the bench and attaching to, or playing it on the bench. And then we see an N putting Pablo down to two, but he has an octillery. Yep. So that rock rough that's on the bench is threatening, turning to a lichen rock to be able to take a knockout uh, next turn uh, on one of these Zorak GXs with perhaps that Buzzwool that already has two energy on it. So the Widow going to be able to copy Claw Slash to put some damage counters on this Lycan Rock. Won't get the knockout, but will at least soften it up. Might become relevant later. Yeah, 140 damage at that. Claw Slash for 140. And there it is. The Claw Slash. Draw. All right, action now is back on Pram. He's really kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Trade. Yeah, uh, he runs the risk. Like he, he can't leave this uh, like in Rock GX active. Uh, but he also, it's very risky to promote Trade. the Zorak GX as the it's weak to Buzzwool and can Pablo can easily knock it out for his last two prizes. So he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. But if there's anyone who's used to these kind of situations, it's Michael Primawatt. So let's see what he can put together. Yeah, and there we see the Bloodthirsty Eyes bringing up Buzzwool GX, hoping to try to take the knockout on it. And Pram reading the Pseudo Widow, trying to see what yeah. I can really play around. Uh, he also might be considering if, uh, or wondering if it can copy GX attacks, um, as he could take the knockout on this Buzzwool here with the Lycan Rock. But Prem's still considering his options. And there is an energy on the bench, Lycan Rock, and there's the dangerous Rogue GX knocking out the Buzzwool. Prem is now down to two prizes, and it's tied up two to two each. And there's a strong energy. He just needs to retreat, attack. And there we and go. That's a knockout. Yeah. So uh, Pablo just kind of <laughs> drawing the strong energy and then saying, "Oh wait, I just have it." So Pablo Meza tying things up here in the semifinals. Uh, one more game will decide who of these two regional champions is going to make the finals and maybe win another regional. Yeah, just maybe, just maybe. <clears throat> All right, but that second game definitely showcased how important Octillery is in this deck and this matchup in particular. Game one, the Octillery got knocked out, turn two or three, and Pablo struggled to set up after that the whole time. And then this game, in game two, you got Octillery, got end. Oh, it's fine. I'll abyssal hand. Yeah, th this game would have gone a lot differently had uh, those ends to, you know, two and four gone differently uh, for Pablo if he didn't have the Octillery. Just would have been stuck with some pretty awkward hands. As it, as it was, he even had another kind of very inconsistent hand in the beginning, uh, but luckily he was able to kind of Lycanroc GX and kind of play around that to get set back up. So we've seen uh, two games that were pretty lopsided there. Uh, Pram was actually fairly close to winning, to winning that game. He uh, played all of his outs, and he put Pablo in a position to uh, not need much, but have to kind of ha specifically have it, or Pram could have taken a knockout the, you know, over the next couple of turns. Um, and I'll be interested to see who manages to come out on top in this game three. Hopefully we get a good competitive game. We still have plenty of time on the clock. You can see Pablo's face just stressed out, looking looking to win. Really important match, playing for a lot of money, playing for a lot of championship points, and playing for the title of uh, regionals finalist, perhaps making it all the way to regional champion. I think the title's one of the best parts. Like, money's good, that's fine, everything. Championship points, fine, but the title of the largest yeah, regional champion it. ever? I mean, you can just get more money. You can't just win more regionals, necessarily. Unless you're Pram Watt. Well, yeah, if you're Pram, you can have any amount of either. <laughs> Uh, nothing too relevant in the prizes there. Double puzzle in Ooh. the prizes for Pram. We'll see how that comes into effect. Maybe he'll take a knockout and draw both of them. All right, here we go. The last, the deciding game of this semifinal matchup between two of the best players in the world. And 
Kramawat is going to start it off like so many matches do with a Wonder Tag into a Bridget and the three of your basic Pokemon right onto your bench. Yeah, exactly. Bridget is just so good for these Stage 1 and Stage 2 decks. Makes it so consistent. And unfortunately for Pram, uh, going first will kind of get this Zora in a little bit of trouble with this Buzzwall being active. Yeah, the uh, Jet Punch can easily take a knockout here on the Zora while pressuring one of Pram's benched Pokemon as well. And the Bridget does get to Zora and a Rockruff. And it's also kind of conceding to the fact that I can always get another Rockruff when my opponent plays Brooklet Hill anyway, but I can never get more Zoras. And there's a passing of the turn. Pablo will start his well, first turn. I think Pablo's hand is all energy and a float stone. Wow, but well, thanks to the weakness from Zora, he takes a prize. knockout. Oh, I didn't, didn't quite see what it was. Looks like it was just a, another Buzzwall. Wow, he missed the Sycamore by one card. <laughs> His hand is not looking hot right now, and I don't know if he can really do much right now. Here's an Ultra Ball after, from Pram after dropping that Zora GX onto the bench. Pram just sensing, all right, my opponent has an awkward hand for the third game in a row. Wasn't able to pull it out in game two, but maybe I can capitalize on this. Wonder Tag finds a Sycamore. Yeah, there we go. Sycamore being able to draw Pram a brand new hand of seven. And he has that fighting energy on the rock rough. Either choosing to retreat it later on, maybe attack, but no, he's going the yeah, old no, choice no, ban. He, he, he's going in here. There's that, bring up that Remoraid. Sycamore, seven cards. Can he find preferably a double colorless energy? He does. Oh, double colorless. There we go. He's going to claw slash, take the knockout on the Remoraid, maybe after a few trades, but uh, yeah, this yeah, will no, limit there's Pablo's. There's still more to do. Yeah, this will limit Pablo's decision making. Uh, depending on what he draws, too. Ultra Ball's not really that great of an out now. Like, you can get Tapu Lele, but it would have been better to grab an Octillery. Right, here we go. There's the knockout. What's on top of Pablo's deck? It is a Professor Sycamore. Okay, Pablo's okay, so still in this. Yeah, he he is going to be discarding his entire hand. I, he can attach. I believe that's a Buzzwool as well. So he is. he's still very in this. Yeah, but discarding. But just look this at the difference in the board state. He has to discard what four energy or three energy, I guess, after this uh, attachment, including a strong energy. Drops the second Buzzwool and just the this this Lycan Rock active two Zorak GXs on the bench. Even a uh, another Lycan Rock activation in that Rock Rough. Just Pram is just set up so great and has to feel so bad for Pablo to have had three awkward opening hands in a row. And there we see the Brooklet Hill. He'll be able to replace that Remoraid if he chooses so. But no, there we see the Rock Rough. Bloodthirsty Eyes is just better right now, I guess. Just deciding to take the Rock Rough, opening himself up to having that uh, Bloodthirsty Eyes gust potential. But still, dealing only... 30 damage with Jet Punch to this Lycanroc GX. That's not what you want to be doing. No, not at all. And he, don't think he has any other options in his hand. Yeah, he's just going to go ahead all right. and There's attack. There's the Jet Punch from Pablo Meza. 30 on the Lycanroc, 30 on the Rock Rough on the bench. And Michael Paramount's hand is ginormous, and it's just going to get bigger. Yep, there's a trade, immediately trades away one of the cards he drew, so Hark GX doesn't need those anymore. And he finds a second puzzle of time. He got one from the prizes and drew another one off the second trade. He might be able to use something with that, too. Evolves into a Lycanroc, does not use Bloodthirsty Eyes. He, like, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target the one with energy. I don't need anything else. Yeah, that, that's, that's fine. I'll just uh, hit this buzz swole. And there's a Professor Kukui. Pram so many really options has. in Pram Watt's hand. Yeah, I was about to say, he has basically everything in his hand right now. For uh, 130, 160. He's going to what to do. Going to go ahead and hit for 160. Uh, yeah, 
150. Oh, 160. Yeah, okay. yeah, the, the band and the Prince of That's right, okay. And all right, it is on Pablo now. What can he put together? He does have a couple supporters in his hand, but it's really on the back foot, even though it's tied one-to-one -one prizes. Looking at Pram's side of the field, it's really intimidating. Yeah, I mean, he just has everything. He has this... Uh, this Lycanroc active, he even has the one on the bench as a strong energy on it. His GX attack is up. He has not used it yet. Two Zorks, a drum, whatever he needs. Just uh, a great setup by Primalot here. All right. Grabbing the Remoraid with Brooklet Hill. Now Pablo's deciding if he wants to use Ultra Ball or not. There is a Lycanroc. Does he choose the Bloodthirsty Eyes? No. He also wants to target down the main attacker with energy that Prim has, and that's that Lycanroc. And here's an Ultra Ball from Pablo. I'm just going to actually go ahead and fail the search before, I believe, playing an N. All right, strong energy on the Buzzwall. Even though it has so much damage onto it, he might, he has the potential to take the knockout right now. Yeah, he, he just needed to attach the strong. It's the only way he actually gets the knockout, unless um, he can find a band. And uh, this, this buzzwall is going down either way. Yeah, unfortunate for Pablo, but it's stuff like this that you have to do to stay in the game. So Pablo would like to see uh, some max elixirs to hopefully have some, be able to attach some more energy onto that bench buzzwall. This turn doesn't look like he's actually going to hit anything, though. He did find the band. Uh, he found an artillery, but he cannot evolve it this turn. But that'll be nice for next turn. All right, and there we see the Knuckle Impact, I believe, taking the knockout and putting Pablo down to three prizes. But Pram has a fresh prize waiting for him. All he needs is a double colorless. Which, by the way, he has in his hand. Yeah, going to go ahead and trade first, getting rid of that energy lotto. Next, getting rid of that strong energy. Making sure he can... Uh, kind of take all the appropriate actions. So it's, I think it's really important. Uh, you're sequencing in these Zorak decks. It's nice to uh, do everything that involves randomness, such as trading, before you commit to attaching an energy or playing a supporter. Uh, playing a supporter depends. Uh, sometimes you need to, but you always want to do everything that can okay. kind of maybe change the way you're going to play before you commit to one certain play. Exactly. And there's a Tapu Lele GX coming down. Wonder Tag 4 and N. And that will shuffle away Pablo's artillery that he had. Yeah, and putting Pablo only on three cards. Three cards, no energy left in play after Pram attacks, no artillery in play. And not a great place to be. These uh, next four cards, three off the end, one off of the top of his deck, is going to uh, determine are going to determine a lot for Pablo. And let's see what they are. I do see an Ultra Ball. Right, so but he, it's also paired with a Buzzwall and a Lycanroc, so he will be able to get Octillery next turn. All right, so he has got out here. Tapu Lele comes into the active energy position. Drive. We're going to see an energy drive for the knockout. Pramawat tying it up three prizes each. Now, it's tied three prizes each, but the way the board state looks, it looks like Pram's winning, like, one to six. Uh, yeah, yeah. Prem's board is definitely he's Prem is definitely winning the match, even though it is uh, tied on prizes. Really important distinction to make. Ultra Ball getting rid of that Buzzwool and that Lycan Rock. Gonna go ahead and find an Octillery. Something he has been missing this game. It's crazy to see how important this little octopus is to this basic fighting deck. Yeah, it's, it's so important to all of these decks that require any amount of setup, basically. Uh, just you need to be able to draw cards. You need to be able to get out of bad ends. And here we go. Abyssal Hand for four cards. And Okay, there is a Sycamore. I was about to say I didn't see any energy. All right, let's see what's in these top seven. All right, there's a Max Elixir and a Strong Energy. That's definitely a good start to what Pablo needs to try to come back from this game. If he, does he have another Buzzwool in hand? Cause Max he does. Is not, okay, Noxilux not doing too much right now, but with that Buzzwool, that will change things. Oh, 
Well, we're taking some time to consider. Just going to go ahead and attach. Nope, taking it back. I think maybe he was thinking he could hit the max elixir on the Lycanroc as well, but decides to think for a second before deciding to attach to the Lycanroc. All right, but there we go. Attaching the basic fighting to the Lycanroc on the match and passing. Yeah, he doesn't want to open himself up to potentially getting dangerous rogued. Um, that is a very good point. Just a Professor Kukui would steal the game, essentially, for Pram. And Mawak just deciding what to do again. He just has so many options between all the search cards, all the draw cards, trade. His deck's getting pretty small. Just plays an Ultra Ball and gets rid of some cards he's not too worried about. And most for surely just going to trade this Zorak away. It's not something you want to draw, so he got rid of two cards that he doesn't need, gets rid of a card he doesn't need in his deck, and then just discards it for two cards possibly that he needs as well. Trade. Here is a trade. Puzzle of time. That is a big card, especially with two puzzles in his hand already. Yeah, he actually has all four in his hand. I all right four? Now, I believe. Looks like he's considering a Guzma. Could we even see a Guzma on the Octillery this turn? Looks like that's what Pram is considering. Uh, he can also, uh, I, I don't think he has outs to this anymore, but he could have done a play where he goes uh, Dangerous Rogue, Strong Energy, Kakui. Take a knockout, but he's just going to go ahead and Guzma up the Octillery. No. And there we go. Pram has been targeting down these Octillaries and Remoraids every time we see him on stream. And he seems to have found the magic like spell to get these decks done. Yeah, uh, he just, I mean, it, it's a common theme in the Pokemon trading card game that normally you want to be able to take knockouts on the support Pokemon. You want to make sure that you're uh, opponents can't do the things they want to do. Uh, I, would, I think a good example of this is um, back in the electric days when it was often correct to knock out the electrics and dynamos even if your opponents had attackers just because those Pokemon, similar to Octillery, are allowing your opponents to do what they want to do. No, they're not the threats. They don't have it's not the high HP, not doing a lot of damage, but very important to recognize when uh, you want, need to play for a little bit of the long game and kind of cut your opponent off of what they want to do. Exactly, and there we see the Claw Slash from Pram's Lycanroc GX, taking out the Octillery, really putting Pablo down. And now Pram is just one GX knockout away from moving on to the semifinals. Yeah, just two prizes remaining. Pablo consulting the discard pile. Pablo has three prizes remaining, so he will need to do a little bit more work if he wants to move on here. So Pablo does have access to the Dangerous Rogue GX attack this turn, and with a full bench on Bram's side of the field, it's a guaranteed knockout on anything he could play. So Rescue Stretcher, looks like it's just gonna get back that Remoraid. Although actually, maybe he's looking through it to take uh, more Pokemon and shuffle them in. Two options on Rescue Stretcher. Well, it really depends, because if he does take the knockout here and does not have an Octillery or a way to get Octillery, being end to one is really bad news. Yeah, looks like he's going to go ahead and shuffle back in the Octillery line and a Tapu Lele. Oh, this is actually great because of Brooklet Hill. Yeah, you can just go ahead and find that Remoraid immediately, just shortcutting the shuffles there. And by doing that, he also has two more outs that he added, added to his deck to survive and end, the Tapu Lele and the Octillery. Energy comes down on the Lycanroc GX, benches the bus wall. We'll see the Max Elixir, and there is a Fighting Energy. So he's starting to rebuild a little, but who knows if it's too little too late. Yeah, attaching to the buzz wall. Pretty... Solid turn here from uh, Pablo, doing a good job of rebuilding. And there we go, ending, ending Pram down to two. He's only getting three cards. Man, this game has swung back and forth so much. 
because now Pablo going down to one prize after the GX attack, all he would need is a Guzma on a Zorg with an energy to take the game. Yeah, it seems uh, like that's how this matchup goes, just kind of very draw dependent, uh, can really be back and forth. And it's kind of awkward here once um, Pablo does take this knockout, another Max Elixir hitting. Uh, it doesn't leave Pram in a great position, really. Uh, he just has Tapu Lele's and Zorax on the board, and neither of those are really what he wants here. Yeah, exactly. Especially with Buzzwall threatening so much damage with a third energy, or even just a Lycanroc if he gets a strong energy as well. And there it is, the Dangerous Rogue GX. One of the most used GX attacks, I think, this weekend. Takes the knockout, putting Pablo down to one prize. Pram really needs to find an end this turn. I do think he will hopefully be able to... Oh, I, I, I guess I misread his hand. I thought he had a double puzzle. Oh, he does a double puzzle. Yeah. So there's the second trade. Now he has three puzzle of time. <laughs> The field blower is pretty important too because it can get rid of the floatstone on the bench, giving away an out to uh, Guzma. And there is the rock rough. Here comes the. But no, he chooses to get rid of the Brooklet Hill along with the choice band. Puzzle of time coming down for Premwa, getting any two cards he wants out of his discard pile. Let's see what he decides to put together. This may be Pramawat's last turn of the game. Looks like he's pulling a double colorless to the front. And that N. Yeah, like I said before, N is what he needs to do now. And now it's on Pablo to see if he draws an auxiliary, draws the Sycamore or Tapu Lele, something like that. But with only two cards, it's a lot to ask for. Ram putting himself to two as well. And let's see what the draws are for Pablo. All eyes are on this draw. Max Elixir. It's not really what he wants. There's the retreat to the Tapu Lele. 120 damage thanks to Energy Drive and those two double colorless energies. All right, here we go. Tense moment. Top deck fighting is energy. fighting energy. That is not what he needs. If it was a strong energy, it would have been game. That would have been it. Now, Pablo loses to a Guzma. Yeah, he can uh, retreat the Lycan rocket out of the way and go in with a knuckle impact on a Buzzwool, but that loses to a Guzma. Also loses to Choice Band Kikui on the Tapu Lele. Pablo going to consult the discard pile. Really, really, really tense moment here. Uh, these are going to be the last turns of the game. Likely Pablo's last turn if Pramawat can put something together here. I would expect Which, this match to end this way no less. Like, just this back and yeah, forth. Back like, and will forth. they, won't they draw the card they need to win the game? Two of the best players in the world. Back and forth matchup playing to take a finalist seat here at the largest regional championship in history. Retreat. There is the retreat on the Lycan Rock. And he brings up the Buswell with the Floatstone and passes. All right, does Pram have Michael the Guzma? Pram what? There's the Rescue Stretcher for the Lycan Rock. Bloodthirsty Eyes will take the game. Michael Pramwat moves on to the finals of it's Memphis just, Regionals. Just needs to retreat the Zorark attack, and Michael Pramwat wins. Wow, that, uh, what can't Pramwat do? nothing <laughs> congratulations to michael Pramwat making the finals here in memphis trying oh look at the defeated face of pablo meza really emotional it's a player. heartbreaker for pablo we had a conversation i had a conversation on camera with pablo earlier where we were talking about just sort of you know his emotions in the game he definitely says yeah i'm, I'm one to get stressed out you know i'm one to go on